good day all. I wrap in and here we are with your financial market wrap up and this wrap up is for Wednesday the uh, 13th of September 2023. I'm beyond frustrated. It's seven o'clock at night. I'm operating this on my hotspot on my phone. I use Xfinity. They went down at two o'clock. I can tell you the exact time it all happened. Got on the phone. First, they told me they're not down. It's all me. I've spent an hour working with somebody. Finally, I swear to you, an hour later, and you know how frustrated you get if you're like me. He says, oh, I'm getting a message. Yeah, we're down in your area. No kidding. They're still not up, so I don't want to spend a lot of time. We're able to get a message here that says, you know how it is with your hotspot. This is a big program, so so far it hasn't happened. CPI numbers came out, I thought hot. You got PPI first thing in the morning, European Central Bank right at the same time. We have uh, other, we got a lot of data at 7.30 and then tomorrow we have retail sales. I realize I am in the minority because you went from a 92% probability on Tuesday of the Fed holding path to 97% today on the CME FedWatch page after the report. If it were me, I'm in a voting member, I'm still saying, give them another quarter point hike. What are you waiting for November? You've got to be that safe. We can cut next year if we see we're wrong, but let's nail this thing, get that uh, uh, shut down. People are saying, well, you know what it is, it's energy. Folks, energy isn't gonna change right away. OPEC has said they're not gonna cut in uh, production, they're gonna keep production cuts, that's what I'm frustrated. Keep production cuts until the end of the year. Biden's telling the oil people, hey, we want to make certain we have enough fuel. Biden, you've turned all these people off. They'll nod yes, they'll be to your face, smile, they'll say things you want to hear. Behind the door, when it closes, you're, you're anti-big oil. I don't think they're going to help you. If the prices go higher, they make more money. That's reality of the situation. Okay, this man doesn't know what he's doing when it comes to an energy policy. All right. On the S&P, do we get back and close under 4428? Well, the world doesn't even think we're going to do that, but if you're going to have a recession of sorts, you probably get some type of correction if that's going to occur. You can see on the chart with the swing line, you still have them with higher lows, but lower highs. Do you see that? So you're narrowing in. You're doing this in three of the indices. You're doing this in the S&P, as you can see here, fighting a battle for direction. By the way, the bulls will be all smiles if you can get up and over 4493.75. The bears need to get under this number to say they're opening the door for the 4400 level. You're going sideways if we take a look at the uh, Bollinger Band. When we look at momentum, sort of just drifting here. So the market's in a funny position. It's waiting for the morning report and maybe even Friday's report. NASDAQ is the same thing, lower highs, higher lows. You have the same thing in the Dow, lower highs, higher lows, and stuck at the 18-day average and flat momentum. The market that's bearish is the Russell. It's the weak link of this. It is very oversold. I'm not telling you to go out and deploy new money on the short side. However, I do look that if it wants to drop further, if everything goes down, it's probably going to the lower band in that 18 and a quarter area. T-Bonds made a statement today, a big outside day to the upside, breaking the back of this bear market that we've had. At the very least, you have a neutral market right now. That's how I'm going to view it. You had an outside day up here, didn't take out a prior high, but the resistance, you can see it. Tell me where the market found its support. When I tell you that enhanced Bollinger Band course, to me, I don't know about you, worth its weight in gold once you understand how to work with these oversold, you hit the Bollinger Band first time, you reverse rather dramatically. That's what my work teaches you and it's something you want to learn. When we look at the dollar index, when and if the red line closes under 79, I think a correction can happen to take you to at least the 18-day average. Am I counting on it? No. I'm still bullish until that happens. What about the euro? Well, now I want to walk away. I don't know what Miss Lagarde's going to do in the morning. There's one pressure on her, especially from Germany. Contraction, contraction. They're looking for no growth now. They're the big engine. You keep 
raising interest rates are only hurting them further. China's not doing well. Where are they going to get their big business coming from? The other part of it, inflation's not dropping. They've got true stagflation issues right now. British pound, first challenge of the 200-day average. That's your support zone. It's not a buy, it's support. Next week, they have their uh, meeting. You have an embedded reading. I think the pros will sell this market on rallies, uh, a good rally, as long as you don't close back over 21. I think they want to hit the market on the short side. Bitcoin, sort of just stuck now at the 18-day average. Notice how the Bollinger Bands are narrowing in, taking the volatility for the time being out of the market. It. No differential moves in the Brent versus WTI crude, not getting a type of signal there. I don't know if you saw today's EIA API numbers. Big builds, and yet the market not doing anything, unable to fall. The market doesn't care about the builds in the U.S. that we get temporarily. The market's going to say, you're not getting more product worldwide, and yes, the United States, you have to import some of that product, and it's high-priced right now. And guess what? We're OPEC plus. We're keeping it high price. Higher lows, higher highs, fully embedded. There's nothing bearish here. Pullbacks in these markets, I think the pros are going to buy it. Gasoline, this is what President Biden's complaining about. Do you know why? It has nothing to do with your pocketbook. He needs votes. Come on, there's a budget, there's all kinds of things he's going to appeal to you. Help me out, folks. You know what you got to do. This is his fault. End of discussion. Natural gas, you can see how the market's just in a sideways action here. Be very, very careful with it. You can see I'm not a fan of Biden on this energy policy. He does a lot of things right. He's for the people. He has no idea what he's doing in energy. Let's take the leases away. Let's not do the pipelines. Let's take away everything and then call on big business, the oil. Hey, guys, uh, oil prices are a little high, and I know gasoline's up. Can you produce more for us and break the price? Ha! I'm Ira. You'll hear more of this in the live webinar tomorrow. Give a click up here. I hope the president doesn't join, and I'll see you tomorrow.